Uh, the FCAC, uh, as a league, what we do is we offer our member schools a Module 15 concussion course, which is mandated for each coach to have prior to start coaching. There is a Rio study going on with all of our football teams in the state where the trainers have to submit uh, statistics on concussions in, during practice and during games for all of last year. Yeah, so we are involved in the Rio study, and all football uh, head injuries are reported. National average is six concussions per 1,000 uh, players playing football in the nation uh, in each state. Uh, the Connecticut average is four, which is well below the uh, national average. All these things are leading towards protecting the athletes and, and keeping them from getting that second impact syndrome. For um, Module 15, there's a concussion portion, which is 45 minutes to an hour that they have to sit through, and I'm present for that. I think that they're being properly taken care of, definitely, um, with officials, coaches, athletic directors, um, parents, athletes all around, even teammates telling the athletes they need to go see a doctor or an athletic trainer. The people have become complacent. They think they know everything there is to know about concussions. Can't do on also on a Boston is probably the preeminent concussion person in the world. He is in the country, but probably the world, because we are a leader in concussion awareness, concussion education, and concussion management throughout the world. He and Bob Cantu for the last two years have been going back and forth about soccer and Bob Cantu believes that you take heading out of soccer until around thirteen or fourteen when they're his technology is developing, hormonally they're developing, and that is from a take that you need to teach them when they're younger, but adjust the balls, start little kids with the nerve and foam balls, so they're learning the right things. Seen here, we have U11 players practicing alternatives to heading. You see them chesting the ball as well as using their thigh to settle the ball, all of which are taught now as an alternative to heading. It has been done out of the Boston hospitals. Um, Boston Children's um, and other Boston hospitals where Bob Cantu works and Chris Nowinski has some affiliation there. Boston University has the brain um, center that Dan McKee is acquiring brains from athletes who pass away. Dr. Ron Krantz in Rhode Island, Dr. Victor Pedro. He seems to be using some of the vestibular audio and ocular therapies that we've used in a sense in therapies for a long time. But over the last 20 years, he's put these together in a combination where he is assessing through these things and then turning around and treating if he sees he can treat. And he's having a lot of success. I have to be very careful about the word cure because cure is an absolute. We have to be careful about that. But he is resolving concussion issues that I don't see many in this country doing. Once in a while, they'll have to come back with what we call a tune-up, you know, either audio or visual or a couple of those. But for the most part, these very depressed people, many of them become suicidal. And we're talking about kids, 14. You're talking about kids the age you work with, looking for ways to take their life because they can't stand the discomfort anymore. He's having a lot of success, and these individuals are being given their lives back. On concussion research, this is Dylan Strawn from Fairfield, Connecticut for Sports SCM.